It is a busy week for housing data, which kicks off tomorrow with the Case Shiller Home Prices Index. Wall Street is expecting the 20 city index to jump 17% annually in July, which is a huge spike, but it's the third month in a row where year over year growth has slowed. Month to month, we're seeing a slowdown with these numbers. Some real estate agencies are already seeing prices drop. By the way, Zillow's latest market report found that nationally, home values lost 0.3% from July to August. While some markets did see a jump, some of the most expensive cities are seeing bigger drops, with California and particularly Los Angeles. Home prices there plunging more than 3%. So is the U.S. housing bubble near bursting? What are we looking at going forward? I want to bring in a Fox Business exclusive, Douglas Elliman, real estate advisor, and the first female cast member on Million Dollar Listing, New York, Kirsten Jordan. It's always great to talk to you, Kristen. Thanks for having me. I love our conversations. Let's start with Kate Schuller. You know, the, the annual numbers are still showing a gain, but these month-to-month -month numbers seem to me is what we need to focus on. We are definitely seeing a deceleration in appreciation, and I think that's the best way to frame this. There was such rapid appreciation for the last couple of years, especially in markets that are actually the traditional markets that saw the most rapid appreciation 10 years ago. The same markets saw the 20, 30, 40 percent increases. And in those markets specifically, I think it's not a surprise that we're seeing deceleration and then depreciation. However, there is still a lot of experts that say that we're still going to see some appreciation over the next year because of the fact that there's going to still be scarcity. Yeah, the numbers in California are pretty disconcerting here. We're looking at San Francisco, uh, a drop of 3.4 percent, L.A., 3.4 percent, Sacramento, 3.2 percent. That's always been kind of a more affordable market. And then Salt Lake City, Utah as well, 2.6 percent. All of those were markets that had done so well. I'm surprised by Sacramento and Salt Lake City just because that was such a popular place for the pandemic. And a lot of remote workers are still working remotely and they're doing it in beautiful Salt Lake. So what the heck is going on there? Those are places that did see the larger appreciation numbers though during the real rapid appreciation of, of having the low interest rates, people moving around, moving to better quality of life. And these were affordable places, especially a place like Salt Lake City. That's an people were considering that affordable, moving there to find more affordable, larger homes, being able to work remotely in the same time zone maybe they were before. Yeah, and, and they're making that change. One of the things we've seen in Florida I wanted to ask you about is that, in particular, as, as this hurricane is coming towards Florida, unfortunately, today, is that, you know, you had all of these remote workers move from New York. They moved from D.C., but really from New York. They moved down there, and then all of a sudden, home prices jumped so much that now all of these Florida homeowners are being kind of priced out. Retirees are being priced out of their own homes. But... Is that a market that you think is going to change and reverse based on what we're seeing now with interest rates above 6%? And, the you know, markets the in Florida that saw the most rapid appreciation, I think in the study I was looking at, it was actually Fort Myers that, so, yeah. that saw the most, I mean, like 40% appreciation. Those, that's where we're probably going to see a change because mm -hmm. it's just not sustainable. And clearly then you raise rates and it becomes that much more unaffordable to purchase these homes. That's where we're going to If you're see a buyer out there right now, and I'm, and I'm sure you're, you, or, I know you work with both sides, but you're probably working with some buyers. What is the time frame, do you think? Because it seems to me it's going to be six months, nine months. It's going to be 2023. But, and then you'll finally kind of see that cratering of home values. A, are we looking at a 20% correction in the housing market? That's what some are calling for. Mm -hmm. B, is that when the, the patient buyer needs to, to kind of look to, that's their time frame to buy something, even if mortgage rates are still you know, 5%, 6%. The buyers that I'm working with, I am coaching them to be very, very knowledgeable about their micro market. Every single conversation about real estate needs to be based in facts around where you're actually buying. It's very difficult to talk about the way that Fort Myers relates to New York City. New York City, we didn't see the same kind of appreciation across the board that other markets saw. We saw tremendous appreciation in the luxury market where stuff was really turnkey, where product was really turnkey, mm -hmm. whereas the rest of the market didn't get to see that. It wasn't, a, you know, the tide didn't raise every single boat. And that's what I'm telling my buyers. The most important thing is to understand what you're really looking at because this is a long-term hold. It's not about trying to time the market. It's about knowing what you, the value is of what you personally can buy that fits with your lifestyle that's sustainable for hopefully five to 10 years. Well, and a lot of those values are being found in the, in the Midwest, the South, 
Alabama, Georgia. That's what we've been doing on American Dream Home as we've been looking at these markets that have been kind of these undiscovered gems where people are saying, the average person is saying, I can't afford to buy in New York City. I can't afford Miami. But you know what? I can, I can afford Blue Ridge, Georgia. That's where I'm going to look. True. You know, what do you make of that? You think that trend continues under all this? I think that that trend will continue with certain people who really have been pushed a little bit further and they still have been able to work remotely. I think there are definitely definitely buyers out there that are saying hey i'm done with cities but the rest of us are going to see yeah it. yeah real quick before i let you go i got to ask you about this compass uh has been on the news lately huge brokerage and one of the newer brokerages out there publicly traded company layoffs trouble at the top rumors that that there is trouble in paradise at compass what do you make of that company as they're losing jobs and in particular what about people that are actually working with compass right now there's definitely, you know, it's clear we've been, everyone's been talking about this now for not just months. This has been going on for a long time. I just hope for the people that work at Compass that no longer have jobs that they're able to find something in real estate if that's where they wanted to work. It really, that's really where my heart goes out to people. I hope that they're able to find yeah. gainful employment and stay in real estate if they want to. The stock is $2.32 right now. It's tough to look at. Kirsten, thank you very much. It's always good to talk to you about real estate. You know, it's my favorite topic. <laughs> Thanks so much. Good to see you again.